Hey guys, Controlled Revelry here, Prayer of the Art of Believing by Neville Goddard. This chapter goes over hypnosis and auto-suggestion with the law of thought transmission and how you can put ideas in other people's minds through hypnosis and um, telepathy, basically. Controlled Revelry. Everyone is amenable to the same psychological laws which govern the ordinary hypnotic subject. He is amenable to control by suggestion. In hypnosis, the objective sentence, senses are partly or totally suspended. However, no matter how profoundly the objective senses are locked in hypnosis, the, the subjective faculties are alert, and the subject recognizes everything that goes on around him. The activity and power of the subjective mind are proportionate to the sleep of the objective mind. Suggestions which appear powerless when presented directly to the objective consciousness are highly efficacious when the subject is in the hy hypnotic state. The hypnotic state is simply being unaware, objectively at least. In hypnotism, the conscious mind is put to sleep and the subconscious powers are exposed so as to be directly reached by suggestion. It is easy to see from this, providing you accept the truth of mental suggestions, that anyone not objectively aware of you is in a profound hypnotic state relative to you. Therefore, curse not the king, know not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. Ecclesiastes 10.20 What you sincerely believe is true of another, you awaken within him. No one need be entranced in the ordinary manner to be helped. If the subject is consciously unaware of suggestion, and if the suggestion is given with conviction and confidently accepted by the operator as true, then you have the ideal setting for a successful prayer. Represent the subject to yourself mentally, as though he had already done that which you desire him to do. Mentally speak to him and congratulate him on having done what you want him to do. Mentally see him in the state you want him to obtain. Within the circle of its action, every word subjectively spoken awakens objectively what it affirms. Incred incredulity on the part of the subject is no hindrance when you are in control of your reverie. Bold assertion by you while you are in, part, in a partly subjective state awakens what you affirm. Self-confidence on your part and the thorough belief in the truth of your mental assertion are all that is needed to produce results. Visualize the subject and imagine that you hear his voice. This establishes contact with the subjective mind. Then imagine he is telling you what you want to hear. If you want to send him words of health and wealth, then imagine that he is telling you, I have never been, I have never felt better. I have never had more and mentally tell him of your joy in witnessing his good fortune. Imagine that you see and hear his voice. A mental conversation with the subjective image of another must be in a manner which does not express the slightest doubt as to the truth of what you hear and say. If you have the least idea that you do not believe what you have imagined you have heard and seen, the subject will not comply, for your subjective mind will transmit only your fixed ideas. Only fixed ideas can awaken their vibratory correlates in those towards whom they are directed. In the controlled reverie, ideas must be suggested with the utmost care. If you do not control your imagination in the reverie, your imagination will control you. Whatever you suggest with confidence is law to the subjective mind. It is under obligation to objectify that which you mentally affirm. Not only does the subject execute the state affirmed, but he does it as though the decision had come of itself. So, so the patient actually thinks that your thoughts that you're transmitting to him originated from him, but they actually originated from you. All right. Not only does the subject execute the state of firm, but he does it as though the decision had come from of itself or the idea had been originated by him, but it was actually originated by you. All right. Control of the subconscious is dominion over all. Each state obeys one mind's control. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your beliefs, which in its turn is the all potent factor in the production of visible states. Imagination and faith are the secrets of creation. Wow, I love this chapter. Auto suggestion, controlled revelry, chapter 19 from the Neville Reader, but specifically this is prayer, the art of believing. Here's my uh, Neville Reader, here's an older one, but nevertheless, it is the Neville Reader. All right, guys. Love you. Hope you enjoyed this. Questions, comments.